Hey, this is Catlin, and I wanted to model for you the process that I go through when I'm working with teachers about how to look at a study sync first read, kind of with the lens of a station rotation on. So this is the basic template that I typically share when I'm working with teachers and we're trying to conceptualize a station rotation. Now, just because there are four stations here, by no means does that mean that that's the perfect number or the, you know, they always have to have four stations. Stations. A lot of times when I'm working with teachers, they might choose to just have three stations, um, depending on the parts of the study sync lesson. So I'm actually just going to merge these two cells. And again, I show them super easy. We can make a four station rotation, a three station rotation, but there's something about the visual breakdown of the rotations into this kind of visual template that's really helpful for teachers. So let's dive into an example. So I'm going to go into the core ELA seventh grade justice served unit and click into the instructional path and pull open the mother Jones first read. Now, when I work with teachers, obviously we typically will go through, we'll preview the assignment. What is this going to look like from the student perspective, right? So we have the preview video, the introduction, the read where they can read it, they can read it with the audio, and then we have the think questions. But when we're actually lesson planning, I will typically dive into the actual lesson plan itself, the kind of like PDF version of the lesson plan, so we can read through the objectives and the overview of the piece and get a sense of kind of what are the what are the focal points of this particular lesson? So for example, um, we're going to ask students to be thinking about the people, the ideas that influence Mother Jones, as well as how she impacted people, ideas, and events once she took action. They're going to be looking for very specific language. And in this particular text, there's language that's used um, that's kind of specific to economics and history and social studies. There's vocabulary that has multiple meanings. So these are all things that we want to kind of keep in mind as we're planning the lesson because they're very important parts of the lesson. Um, and then because this is grounded in history, this is about an actual person um, in a moment in history, there is a degree of prior knowledge or background knowledge that would be really helpful for kids to appreciate the impact that this woman had. So we review that together, um, the teacher and myself, and then we look through the parts of the lesson. So obviously with the first read, you have the intro introduction where you watch that preview, you read the introductory piece. There is a great building background activity here where there are a couple different questions about who was Mother Jones? Um, how did she become a labor leader? What was the Great Philadelphia Textile Strike of 1903? And what was the Children's Crusade of 1903? And then there's even resources here so that students don't necessarily have to do kind of a, a Google search and filter through the, <laughs> the millions of hits that they might get for that, but they can actually start at these curated links. So what I'm going to do and what I do with teachers, because often the misconception is that, oh, planning a station rotation, it's going to take so much longer. My messaging to teachers is not if you're pulling the really dynamic parts of the study sync lesson um, to build your stations. And so I'm going to put the, the build background right here um, in station two. And then we have our directions right here. And what's nice about this is depending on whether you have you know, three stations or three groups of students rotating or four groups of students, you might actually use these different questions so that each group rotating through the build background is really just focused on one of these different questions. Um, and since these two, since we have three stations kind of planned for this lesson, and these two questions, who is Mother Jones and how did Mother Jones become a labor leader, are to me very related, I am going to pull those together and I am going to make a note that this will be rotation number one. That, so the, the kids who rotate in rotation number one will do that question. The kids who rotate in number two are going to tackle this question about the Great Philadelphia Textile Strike. And then the kids who rotate through uh, on rotation three will investigate the Children's Crusade of 1903. That way, you know, in a because I'm going to say this is probably going to be 20 minutes for each station. 
that would give them enough time to kind of tackle the question that their particular group has been assigned. Um, and then this piece here, I can kind of decide, do I want to add my own kind of customized directions for each group, right? So I can add those here saying, begin by using the links to research your question, um, discuss the information you find, and create a poster or timeline, okay? So obviously I would build those out more if I was working with the teacher, but it gives you a sense of here's a great activity. It's straight from the lesson plan. Um, you can build these kinds of things out with teachers where maybe there is a, you know, a communication skill, there's a research skill uh, at work here in this piece. Now let's go back to the study sync lesson, um, the lesson plan. Now the build background is a great activity. Obviously there is that make predictions about vocabulary. So when students are doing the first read, there are usually around five bold words. And as kids hit those words, we want to make sure they're making predictions about the words and what they think they mean based on the context clues. And there's a model here that you can go through if you want to use this or teachers want to use this for direct instruction. I typically suggest that they, they do a couple models of this, either in a teacher-led station or whole group at the start of the year so that students understand how to use context clues to make predictions. But once you have a pretty firm understanding of how to get that done, then I would weave that into the first read. So as kids are reading and they're annotating the text, they're also making those vocabulary predictions. Underneath that, we have the model reading comprehension strategy. These are perfect for the teacher-led station because it really gives teachers an opportunity to work with a smaller group of students on this particular strategy. And for this text, it's asking and answering questions, um, kind of using a bit of a think aloud strategy um, and then allowing students to practice. So what I would do for our station is have a teacher-led reading comprehension strategy asking and answering questions. Okay, and underneath direct or description, I'm gonna put that here. And again, I would probably, um, and then if you have teachers who are working in districts that are very concerned about what, you know, what standards you're hitting and when, remind them that they can pull the actual standards right here if that's more helpful than kind of like a more basic description of what the task is. So that way they can be, feel really like they're covering everything that they're supposed to be covering in the different um, activities that they're assigning for students. So again, you could make this very specific, they could build out the actual standards um, in this area. Now for a reading comprehension strategy, I would definitely encourage teachers to think about doing this in an I do, we do, pairs do, you do. And the idea here is that if I'm modeling asking and answering questions, I would begin with the I do here by asking a question as the teacher and then answering it as a think aloud. How, you know, if somebody asked me that question, this is how I would answer it. Then you get to the we do, and as a group, I would pose a question to the group, and then we would talk out, and, and I would allow the students to kind of contribute the answers to the questions. I like a pair do, so instead of, you know, I do, we do, and then give students time to work on their own, I like to pair students up, and again, have one person ask the question, the other person try to answer it, and then flip-flop so that they each get a chance to answer a question and ask a question. And then you can have students dive into the text, um, read a couple of paragraphs, and craft some questions as they read. So this would make a really good teacher-led station. Now going back to the lesson plan one more time, so we're looking for that third station, and for me it makes obviously a lot of sense that now we want them reading and annotating the text. We want them to look for, or we wanna make um, 
want them to make uh, predictions about what they think vocabulary means based on how it's used. And so we're going to bring this up a little bit. We're gonna make that read and annotate. And I'll say read, annotate, and make vocabulary predictions here. And then I will put the description here. I can even pull from the lesson plan the, the section on making vocabulary predictions and add that as well since that's an important part of this. And then again, telling teachers, you know, you keep your eye on the standards and if you want to make sure that you're always anchoring your lessons in the standards, you can literally just grab them straight from the lesson plan, making it easy to track what you've covered when you've covered it. So I'm going to add this here. Now, one of the things that teachers are going to be curious about is that when they're when they're thinking through a station rotation, they're they're going to get into a situation where they ask you, "Hey, I understand breaking these into parts. Uh, this seems like a, a fun lesson, but they are going to be concerned about if students begin, you know, in one station, then they might be building background like after they've read part of the text." My messaging to teachers is think about your, you know, your grouping. Do you want to have mixed level groups? Um, do you want to have reading level groups where perhaps the, the students who are lower level readers in the class begin in this teacher led station so that their first introduction to the text is in this question, answer, reading comprehension strategy station where they're learning how to ask and answer questions and they're working with the first few paragraphs of the text. So they get kind of a jump start on the text and they're learning a strategy that will help them to be more successful as they read the text. Um, then those lower level readers could go to the build background station, get a little of that building background, get a little bit of a break from the, the heavy cognitive load that it is to kind of dive into a deep complex text or a challenging text, um, have this creative activity. And then the third station for those kiddos would be to read and annotate, but they've already gotten a jump start on the reading because they started in the teacher led reading comprehension strategy. Now for me, I would probably start my higher level kids at the, if I was breaking them up by skill level, I would have them start in the read, annotate, make vocab prediction station. That way they can wrestle a little bit with the text. They're gonna be more successful because they have a stronger reading level. And then as a teacher, when they come to my teacher-led reading comprehension strategy station, we can double back to what they've already read um, and pull pieces, pull sections to ask questions and answer questions about. So it really just depends on your grouping strategy, how you wanna group students, how you wanna move them through a station. You may also find, depending on the time that teachers have, that the pre-station activity is watch the preview and read slash discuss the introduction. Um, and this could happen, you know, at the very beginning of class. Uh, a post voc or a post station rotation activity might involve having students actually transition into an offline small group discussion. So let's see, post uh, station rotation. And then again, luckily the, the lesson plan already has all of these great discussion questions here. So after the station rotation, you can have them stay in the same groups. You could have them move into different groups, kind of like mix up the groups so that they're working with other students for this particular section. And you can have them just kind of wrap up this station rotation with a small group discussion in which they take those discussion questions from the lesson plan and they talk about the text. So this is just an idea for how you could take a, a study sync first read and break it up into a station rotation. And for me, the value is in doing this is one, in this teacher led, the teacher can customize the explanation, the scaffolds, the supports for the kids sitting right in front of them, whether that's uh, reading level groups, mixed level groups. Here in the build background, because you have smaller groups of students working together on this kind of 
collaborative research creative task, more students are going to lean into that experience. Um, you could also add as a post station rotation activity, kind of like the share out of the posters or the timelines they created. So each of the different groups can learn what, what the other group was investigating. And then the read and annotate as a station, um, hopefully students can decide, do I want to read this? Do I want to listen to the audio? Instead of having to do it lockstep with the whole class, they have a little bit more control over the pace of their reading. So just an idea, an example. And so as you guys choose a first read and you think about it, I will make sure you have access to this template, I will give you a three station rotation template too, just in case you're not comfortable merging cells in a Google document. Um, and then think about what are the parts that you'd pull? And remember, we can't cover everything. Teachers just can't cover everything. So what are the high kind of high leverage components of the lesson that you really want to focus on? Um, and one of the things that I could have very easily added to this piece here, the read and annotate, was specific notes about making sure kids are looking for key details in the text that describe and explain the people, ideas, and events that influence Mother Jones, as well as her influence on other people, um, ideas, and events during the time period, as well as making a note that there's a lot of language specific to history, specific to economics and social science that students should highlight if they're not sure what those words mean, so they can double back and kind of look up those definitions. So you can customize your directions. They don't have to be verbatim straight from the lesson plan, though they absolutely could. So I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with and all of the lesson plans that are submitted. I will be giving um, personalized feedback, comments, suggestions, asking questions, so that hopefully you can fine tune them and use them as an exemplar when you're working with your teachers. So I'm looking forward to your lessons and have fun with this activity.